Today, President-elect Joseph R. Biden will be sworn in as the 46th president of the United States. Joining us right now with a look at what the economy will look like under President Biden is Senator Mark Warner of Virginia. And, and Senator, things are already heating up a bit. What, what do you think we can be in for? What, what should we expect the next four years? Well, I think we're seeing this president, uh, President Trump, leave in many ways the way he came in. I remember sitting four years ago when he gave one of the darkest inauguration speeches in American history. I was sitting with John McCain, and he was uh, astonished at the tone of his speech. Mean-spirited, no willingness to reach out. That really was the hallmark of Donald Trump's four years. And now we're leaving with, unfortunately, 400,000 Americans dead. Uh, we saw 140,000 job loss uh, recently. We've seen um, in this last day uh, him leaving with pardoning a lot of his cronies. And literally, uh, one of the things I don't know if you guys have talked about yet, he did away with the drain the swamp executive order he put in place so that his staff, who I'm not sure are going to be very marketable, uh, can immediately go out and become lobbyists. So uh, I think he's left an economy that's reeling. He's left a country that's divided. I think Joe Biden brings the right approach. Even if you don't like Joe Biden politics, you know this guy is going to bring enormous amounts of empathy. I think first thing he's got to do is make sure, and I think we're, we're geared for this, the vaccine um, distribution gets organized and rolled out in a first world approach, not a third world approach. I think from the economy, as somebody who was part of the uh, putting together the last COVID package, the bipartisan package, where we basically said, you know, enough with the political leadership, we need to do our own thing. Uh, I want to see a little more of the results of that $900 billion. Biden's put out a marker at $1.9 uh, uh, a big number. Uh, I think there may be some repositioning of some of that. Uh, but the good news, again, is I think Biden has said he does not want to try to force this through some kind of reconciliation process, that he really wants us to get 60 votes. So this bipartisan coalition that's now grown to close to 20 senators, I think we're going to have a lot to, a lot to say in terms of uh, uh, getting this next package out. I think there are a lot of people in this country who would like to see some bipartisanship and maybe see a little bit of healing that takes place. Uh, usually a president gets a little bit of a honeymoon period. Those first days are pretty important. But this this time is, is setting up for potential showdowns already. W we know that uh, McConnell and uh, Schumer are already scuffling over the idea of whether the filibuster will continue or not. Uh, McConnell would like to see that threat removed before he says he can negotiate on other issues. And then you have the impeachment hearing that, that's hanging over all of this. So what do you think realistically can get done with so many other things that are, are calling for attention, including the, the the coronavirus pandemic. Well, Becky, I think that at some level, some of this squawking back and forth seems to become kind of the um, accepted means. I can tell you yesterday, um, my committee, the Intelligence Committee, held a hearing on Avril Haines uh, to be the next director of national intelligence. It was thoughtful. It, we asked her hard questions, but there was broad bipartisan support. I'm not sure I'm going to get a unanimous vote, uh, but I'm going to get... Um, a overwhelmingly bipartisan vote out of that committee. And um, my sense was, uh, and I say this from my uh, Republican colleagues, now I've been proud this committee's, you know, we, we did a three-year Russia investigation and we kept it bipartisan. Uh, but this group of Republican colleagues, I think they're ready to turn the page as well. They know our country faces enormous challenges. You know, candidly, one of the biggest uh, challenges, uh, at least on a propaganda basis we face right now is the uh, incredible gift that was given to Vladimir Putin with the uh, the images of those thugs walking through the halls of Congress two weeks ago. Those images of American democracy and disarray was as, about as good a gift as Donald Trump has ever given to Putin. This helps our enemies in China, North Korea, Iran as well. But I think there's an awful lot of us who are at the rank and file level in the Senate who are tired of the, um, the bickering, want to get something done, and on the economic basis, uh, I'm sure we'll make changes to what Biden has proposed, but I think we'll get a package done. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.